Do the Packers coming off a big day yesterday, the signing of Josh Jacobs, do they suddenly have the best offense in the NFC? Yes, arguably they did last year from week 10 on. They were basically unstoppable on offense and green. They scored 69 points in two playoff games. Josh Jacobs is younger, more productive, more explosive than Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones was a good player when healthy. They made the right decision, not the easy one. Well, it's a cruel business. Right, and you guys know it. I mean, uh, Mike Tannenbaum, you know it from the seat you had to sit in all those years, and Graziano and I have followed it and covered it all these years. And Dan, you played it. I mean, it is a cool. Aaron Jones did everything you could do for a franchise. He was a great player. He was a great leader. He was a great part of the community. But at the end of the day, they saw an opportunity to get better there, and they just did it. And Aaron Jones, boom, cut. We'll see where he winds up. Josh Jacobs, boom, younger and in. Am I being told Aaron Jones to the Vikings is a yeah, done deal? It, it, is that is that what I'm being like told? He's Aaron Jones expected to join the Vikings um, on a one-year deal. So okay, we'll see. Wow. As news develops here, if, if any of, the, of, of it comes in as yeah. we are on uh, the air, certainly we'll pass it along. So Aaron Jones stays in the division. But, Dan, let's, let's focus on Green Bay. I mean, they, they obliterated the Cowboys in the playoffs. They had a really good chance to beat the 49ers on the road. Yeah. They get another year from Jordan Love, and now they add, you know, the new piece here in Josh Jacobs. What do we think about Green Bay? Yeah, top three or four offense in the conference next year, and this is an offense that I would bet on making a lot of problems for defenses. Green, Josh Jacobs is a bell cow, and while they were really good offensively last year, specifically late in the season – you know, when you add a player like Josh Jacobs, it is, hey, every down we can potentially run the football. We don't have to necessarily mix and match like they did with a little bit A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. If you go back two years, just 2022, he ran for over 1,600 yards and five yards per carry. But this is what's crazy. He ran for over 1,000 yards on first down alone that year. That's where you're going to see the impact for that offense. Imagine this Matt LaFleur offense that loves to be that play action game and run the football and the speed and the weapons they have on the outside now being dominant on first down. You're talking about setting Jordan Love up, not for success, but for the potential for domination offensively. If they stay healthy on the perimeter and that back stays healthy like he did in 2022, this is an offense that looks to be a top three or top four one in the conference. I completely agree. I, I said they were a sneaky good Super Bowl pick at the end of last year, and they only got better yesterday despite the loss of Aaron Jones and the future Jet David Bakhtiari. Yeah. <laughs> Just to add to that, um, Josh Jacobs had 197 career One receptions. person laughed. I got one laugh out of it. I could use – I didn't get a harumph I, out of this I didn't guy. think you were joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's no that's that's property. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, look, Jordan Love was a young ascending player. I agree with what Dan said, but when you add what Josh Jacobs does out of the backfield, again, these are long handoffs and checkdowns. This is a really difficult offense to defend, especially when you look at the depth at tight end and wide receiver. The fact that they're so young and inexpensive gives yeah. give them very unusual depth. And that's why, to me, when you just look at the way they finish Greeny and where they should start, I think they have the best offense in the NFC. I would take them over the 49ers. Aaron Jones came back from his injury last year and was awesome for the Green Bay Packers down the stretch. A key part of why their offense was so good down the stretch and into the playoffs. Problem is, he had to come back from injury, right? right? And he's getting toward 30 years old. Josh Jacobs, three years younger. Packers always thinking long-term, always thinking future, right? They have a young offense, young receivers, young quarterback. They bring in a young running back who's already established. A 26-year-old free agent is gold, right? I mean, that's exactly when you want to get these guys. By the way, they signed a 24-year-old safety. The Packers yeah. are... Xavier Packers going to Packer. I, I like what the Packers are doing. Yeah. The other side of it, Aaron Jones goes to Minnesota. Justin Jefferson is there. He's arguably the best receiver in the National Football League. They lose their quarterback, uh, Kirk Cousins, to the big money deal to Atlanta. They bring in Sam Darnold, who feels like a bridge option. Maybe they try and draft a rookie. It will beg the question, if the Vikings are rebuilding, should they consider trying to get the hall of all halls and trading Justin Jefferson, Mike T? Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. And here's something else you got to be worried about if you're the Minnesota Vikings is Justin Jefferson knocking on your door saying, hey, I want to get traded. I'm not, I don't want to play with Sam Darnold. I want out of here. And you've got to be careful because now all of a sudden you're going from Kirk Cousins, Danelle Hunter, Dalvin Cook, and maybe Justin Jefferson. This is tearing it down to the studs. So if you go down that road and you can get two ones for Justin Jefferson, and maybe outside of Tyreek Hill, he is the best receiver in the league. 
This could be a real problem for Minnesota. And look, Sam Darnold, this is his fourth team. I know the Jets ruined him, but if I'm Justin Jefferson, am I going to be able to get the production that I want at that position? Orlovsky. I've said for uh, a year now, Greeny, the only thing that matters in Minnesota is how they keep Justin Jefferson. Now that Kirk Cousins has moved on, he's the face of their organization, the face of their franchise. I don't think you just walk away from that, even though some of the young receivers that are coming into the NFL out of college are really good. For me, I love Sam Darnold there. I think he can go play well there. They are the prime team to move up in the draft. If you had to give me one team that had to go up in the draft now, coming off of yesterday, it's Minnesota. And I would go... Are they going to get Drake May, or are they going to go get J.J. McCarthy? That's one-two for them. That's fair, but I think they also right now project to be the worst team in the division. Well, I mean, the Bears look like they're ready to to make themselves a lot better. The Lions were in the NFC Championship game yesterday. We just raved about the Packers. (coughs) Minnesota just lost their quarterback. How are they not the worst team in that division? They could be, but they could still be good. Look, they they signed a bunch of guys on defense yesterday, good ones that other people were interested in, Jonathan Grenard, uh, et cetera. So they feel like... If they can't keep Cousins, which they couldn't, they build an infrastructure. If it's a rookie quarterback coming in, at least he has a good defense. He's got a good running back. He's got great receivers. Uh, Maybe they can do something with it. We're back on Get Up. QB Quick Reads is our next business. And Dan Orlovsky, it's all on you. Here we go. Does Kirk Cousins make Atlanta a Super Bowl contender? No. Atlanta will be an NFC South contender with Kirk Cousins, but Super Bowl contender, no. I still place legitimate Super Bowl contenders ahead of them with the Los Angeles Rams, the San Francisco 49ers, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Green Bay Packers, and the Detroit Lions. But it gives them a chance to win the division against a highly touted and competitive Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. All right, I might circle back to that. It's an interesting point. But meanwhile, let's let's go to Minnesota. Will Sam Darnold be their starting quarterback this year? I, I, it's either going to be Sam Darnold or the rookie that they draft, and they will draft a rookie. Sam Darnold's going to be in a really good place with Kevin O'Connell in his offensive line. He's a guy that's still talented and young. But I also think that the two names that are directly attached to this organization, quarterback-wise, coming out of the draft are going to be Drake May out of North Carolina and J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan, both ideal fits for this offense. Well, they would almost certainly have to move up from where they are to get those guys. And then finally... What of Justin Fields? He's been the most talked about player on this show now for weeks. Yeah. We kept waiting for the what, 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 people to start lining up, right? Teams to line up down the block to try and acquire him. Seems nobody wants him. What What is the best fit for him now? What should happen here? Yeah. In, in honor of McAfee, I have no idea. I, I don't know, mm. Greeny. I, you know, you've tried to parse this throughout the offseason of thinking it and where, where's the good place for him. And, Right now, I don't know if it's going to be a starting situation. It almost feels and seems like it's going to be a Mac Jones type of situation. Teams that I'll throw out that might be a little bit of the off the beaten path or the, I guess, the expected path, Greeny. You know, does Cleveland want to invest behind Deshaun Watson? Indianapolis loses Gardner Minshew. Could they do that behind Anthony Richardson? What about Washington? What about the New York Giants? So it might be a situation where it's a, a, a potential backup role, which is shocking to me rather than competing for a starting job. So, so let's, let's analyze, because Dan has his opinion, you have yours, I have mine. We've all been Justin Fields believers all along. But, you know, what's, what's the old line? 50 million Elvis fans can't be wrong. What message is the entire NFL sending here? Mike, this has been your life for a long time. What message is being sent here? We don't think you're a starter. When we saw three yeah. teams yesterday go in a different direction, arguably for, for more than what it would have been, once Mac Jones got traded for a six-round pick, Greeny, you could have had Justin Fields, presumably for a six-round pick, and $2.7 million, and yet Gardner Minshew, Jacoby Brissett, and Sam Darnold go before him. It's shocking to me. And when you look at that, I totally agree with Dan. That, he brought up some really interesting teams. But again, you look at those bridge-year quarterbacks, that has J.J. McCarthy written all over it, that those three quarterbacks are bridges for, at number three could be, obviously, Jaden Daniels uh, or Drake May. But certainly, I think J.J. McCarthy was the winner. But now there has to be a sense of urgency in Chicago to move on because, Greeny, you've been there in Chicago with the Bears. Could you imagine Caleb Williams and Justin Fields even going out for a practice in May? Who's getting what rep? 
boy, Justin Fields looked better than Caleb Williams. Does that mean he starts every single day? That will be the story of the franchise. That's why you got to cut your losses. If you're the Bears, trade him as soon as possible. That's probably right. What, 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 Dan? What here? I, I think that's what will happen. Because I mean, they're on record saying they want to do right by Fields and keeping him around just in the hope that you ultimately get a better deal than what's on the table now would not be doing right by him, right? Or really by the quarterback, they're probably going to draft Caleb Williams or by their coaching staff. So. I think at some point they'll move him. The, que the question is where and what kind of situation are we now looking at? To Dan's point, you know, I, I think it is going to have to be either a backup role or a place where he's fighting for a starting job. Uh, we've mentioned the Giants just as pure speculation. It makes sense. They have a quarterback coming off of injury, and there's a place where he could get a lot of offseason reps, work with the coaching staff, build himself back up to the point where next year he becomes an option for that team or for another team. Uh, I heard it suggested by a couple people yesterday, the Colts, right? Like uh, another yep. quarterback coming off of an injury, a great coaching staff with quarterbacks that might be able to help put him in a better position a year from now. So as shocked as we all are by it, the league tells us what they think, what the league tells us what it thinks of these guys. And right now, this is where Justin Field stands. Yeah. There were people that wanted Gardner Minshew and Jacoby Brissett and Sam Darnold as their possible starters over him. Agree. Just so we're clear, 10 days ago, we're having this conversation. We're saying, well, it's probably going to be a second round pick. If you're giving up a second round pick, you're going to exercise the fifth year option. Right. You're looking at $28 million fully guaranteed. You're looking at $2.7 million on a one year deal. And that to me is stunning for a player that has flashed really high upside. And you've talked about his character, Greeny, going back to the Big Ten days. Like, I can't find anything wrong with him in saying, you know, when. The talent sets the floor and the character sets the ceiling. The upside is so compelling. I'm shocked that one of those three teams didn't say, hey, for a six round pick, we're going to give Justin Fields a chance. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, and I think if you're a, if you organizationally believe, and Mike T, you could speak to this, that you are a legitimate Super Bowl contender for a sixth round pick and two and a half million dollars, to have a capable backup we've seen is paramount. I do like the Giants as an entertaining thought, Graz. I do think Indy makes sense. I think Philadelphia could be an option, mm -hmm. just as a potential backup for a cheap option. Sure. What about the Los Angeles Rams with Matthew Stafford getting older? So I, I think that there's teams out there that we now have to look at it differently and say, well, you're not just going to trade for Justin and make him the starter. Right. But I do think that there's multiple teams that you sit there – this one doesn't make sense to me, guys. I it feel like Lamar last year. I don't get it. I don't know why. Mm. I feel like I'm not doing my job at a high enough level because it just doesn't make sense. I got the Lamar one last year. No one wanted to give a fully guaranteed contract. That would have changed NFL precedent, and the owners were all hesitant to do it. This one makes a lot less sense to me because I don't – there is the cost at this point is so. What's the opposite of prohibitive? Hibitive? <laughs> yeah. Anti-hibitive? I mean, wh wh whatever the opposite of prohibitive is. If you can get him for a fourth, a fifth round draft pick at this point, to your point, you they're now not obligated to pick up the fifth year option immediately. It's almost the same thing as taking the flyer on Russell Wilson that the Steelers did. Again, Mac Jones trade changed everything, and no one's reacted, which is stunning. Yeah, I mean, I, but that's a symptom. I mean, over the weekend, making calls on on the quarterback landscape. I heard that a lot. These teams do not view Justin Fields on a one-year deal as any kind of better option than, and the list was Gardner Minshew, uh, Drew Locke, and uh, and who else signed yesterday? Brissett. Sam, Dar and Sam, uh, Sam Darnold. Darnold, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's the way it played out. In Atlanta, the new home of Kirk Cousins. Four-year contract, $100 million guaranteed dollars. Cousins is 36, or he will play this season at 36. He tore his right Achilles week eight of last season. We've seen the video of him rehabbing and all the rest of that. Vegas likes it. Atlanta's odds to win the NFC South were plus 120 prior to the signing. They're now the odds on favorites at minus 110, followed by Tampa, followed by New Orleans, followed by Carolina. Shefty, take us through this. How did Captain Kirk wind up a Falcon? Well, he had discussions at length with the Minnesota Vikings over the weekend. And I think there was a point in time where it seemed to be swinging back to Minnesota. But then in the end, Atlanta steps up and gives him four years. And keep in mind, they're giving a 35-year-old quarterback coming off a torn Achilles four years. And they're guaranteeing him $100 million. And the Falcons had said that quarterback was their priority. And they went out and showed it with their wallet because they paid Kirk Cousins in a way that Minnesota wouldn't and didn't. And when they stepped up the way that they did, 
And Kirk Cousins' wife's family is from Atlanta, and he has spent time in the offseason in Atlanta. It made it a simple decision. And to me, for the Atlanta Falcons, when you have a new head coach like Raheem Morris coming in, and let's not forget the fact that Raheem Morris worked with Kirk Cousins in Washington when Morris coached on the defensive side of the football and the Washington team drafted Cousins that year. He knows exactly what he's getting. And he and their new offensive coordinator, Zach Robinson, want to run the type of offense that the Rams have. Who's better to do it than Kirk Cousins? And when you sign him, you become an instant contender in the NFC South, an instant contender in the NFC. He transforms that team overnight and leaves the Vikings, who turned to Sam Darnold, in a little bit of a tough situation right now. So, Dan Orlowski, complete that sentence. Kirk Cousins makes the Atlanta Falcons... What? Yeah, contenders in the NFC South, certainly to win the division, certainly a playoff football team. They were a borderline playoff football team, what felt like two or three seasons now under Arthur Smith, and now under Raheem Morris, they finally have a quarterback that gives them a chance to actually cap catapult this offensive talent into something meaningful, Greeny. Kirk Cousins, just so everyone knows, last year was on track for 5,000 yards and almost 40 touchdowns before his Achilles. And I know he's got Addison and Justin Jefferson. I said this yesterday when the signing happened. America, Drake London. You are going to hear that name become household. He is going to become an absolute superstar. And it gives Minnesota, excuse me, it gives Atlanta likely one of the top six or seven offenses in that conference and certainly within that division. And now gives them an opportunity, a chance versus Tampa Bay with Baker Mayfield, and they didn't have it yesterday morning. Yeah, Drake London drafted ahead of Garrett Wilson in that draft Superstar, a couple of years right. ago. And, and it leaves it, it, it leaves a lot of tentacles here, right? Because now Minnesota all of a sudden needs a quarterback. I'll come to Mike T on his winners and losers in a second. But the Cousins thing, to Shefty's point, I know you were working it all day, all week, all, you know, the combine and everything. It was a two-horse race. Someone was always going to win and is always going to leave somebody in a bad spot. Right, and Minnesota was still talking to them as of yesterday morning. They just never got to the point where they were willing to match the guarantee. And Atlanta is going to pay him $100 million over the next two years. It's actually very similar in, in a lot of ways structure-wise to the Daniel Jones deal in that the Falcons could get out of it after two years having paid him. It, it reflects a higher salary because Cousins is a better player. But anyway, uh, Minnesota left with, they bring in Sam Darnold, excuse me, who's a candidate uh, to start for them. Uh, but they also have the flexibility of Minnesota now if they want to try and trade up in a draft. If they end up with a player that they feel like they can start right away as a rookie, um, then Sam Darnold is a, a, a nicely paid backup. So you saw a couple teams do this. The Patriots did it with Jacoby Brissett. The Raiders did it with Gardner Minshew. All those teams are positioning themselves in similar ways. They could take a guy in the first round of the draft, and if they don't want to play, pay him, I'm sorry, play him right away, they have somebody they can play instead. So